Red Zone time, yes! Thank you Tokyo Treat and Sakuriko for sponsoring this video. Hey everyone, welcome to Elevate Your Power Level, where we analyze the artwork and life lessons from anime. I'm Coach Donnie and I'm an art teacher, former animator, volleyball coach, and volleyball player. In this video, I'll be reacting to Kuroko no Basket Season 2, Episode 24. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications for weekly reaction videos. Now let's get this Kuroko party started. Oh, the cyclone. Man, the brawly eyes and breaking the hoop. That's right, they had to do a little timeout. <laughs> that, was, that was messed up how it was just lifting him from his arm. Might as well just lift him from his neck. Alley oop. One thing that I like in anime is sometimes they don't just animate the fluid movement, but they have those still images to where they have those speed lines and it's it feels like it's moving, but it's not. But it's just a great reference to manga because that's where all this comes from is from manga. But you see here as it's moving and he's actually not shaking his body. It's the frame that's shaking, but then you have the speed lines. It just gives you a little bit of a different interaction and style of movement. For Kiyoshi Senpai. Join our channel memberships and be a part of an exclusive interactive community where you receive early access to all my reaction videos five days before they get released, behind the scenes content, members only polls, monthly watch parties where you get to interact directly with me, and uncensored reaction videos with 100% opacity for an extra level of enjoyment. You'll also receive exclusive loyalty badges and custom emojis just for members. So click that join button below to enjoy your members only perks today. Day. Only a four point game. Oh, the episode's called Enough. Who's gonna say this is enough? Okay, so there he already goes. One minute is enough. Let's see if the, co the coach has got to let him in. Nani? So, as a coach, I'm torn in these moments when a player is about to get injured, but they want to play and they want to contribute. And yes, we all want to win, but it's been very clear that Rico does care about Kiyoshi's health because I don't advocate when coaches ignore a player's health, both mental, emotional, and physical. Where if they have a concussion and they're obviously dizzy and then they, they put them back in the game, that's... That's really dangerous. I, I'm not advocating for that. But I do oftentimes ask a player and take their feedback when maybe their shoulder hurts or they tweak their ankle or their knee hurts a lot or they have a prior injury. And when I see them moving funny, I remove them off the court. We have a conversation. And fortunately, at the school that I coach at, Monroe Catholic, we have a trainer to evaluate that person as well. And if I get the okay that there's no structural damage, then I feel more comfortable putting them out even if they're in pain because sometimes it's great compared competitors, you do have to trust that I know what I'm doing and I'm willing to take the risk. But that's not always as clear as you want it to be and there's a fine balance between prioritizing the athlete's health but also understanding the needs of a great competitor of wanting to be out there with the risk that involves. So it's a tricky situation. Ooh, tying the hair back. That's really cool detail sorry i know i'm pausing a lot but the fact that they would even have a scene where she's tying her head back as she's talking gives that multi-dimensional engagement and what i mean by multi-dimensional is you can have just a person talking to the screen you can have someone walking and animating but then to have them also doing something else like filing paperwork fixing the hair is just another way to make it more realistic while i'm gone where's she going <laughs> Yosun just always looks, or much, I mean, it's like Ibarra always just looks so frustrated. Oh, I love that physical matchup between Kuroko and whoever the other tall player is. Oh, the step back. 
alley oop into Mirasaki Bara. Is he gonna block him? Or is can Mirasaki Bara actually pass too? Oh no, he just Oh, he does a reverse alley oop dunk. I don't think I've ever seen that before. It's a good landing technique. Kagami. That's a great angle there. So Kagami is already pretty tall, maybe like six foot five, six foot six. And then Mirosaki Bara, he appears to be like six eleven, seven feet tall. And even at this angle when he's talking, he's actually looking up. So there's a downward camera angle, and that keeps you in the scene because a lot of times Kagami is actually looking down where if he's talking to Kuroko or his teammates, the camera angle is up, and so you see the bottom of his nose. But here you see the top of his nose here. So really good job keeping that perspective consistent. The stealth full court. Oh, here we go. Brother versus brother. Does he do the vanishing drive? Oh, he crossed him up. Oh, is it gonna get the steal from Kuroko? <laughs> Hello. That's confidence and determination. Oh, that's the charging. The charging lines, I love it. Oh, did he just get into a zone? So he's red. I don't know if this is just him getting angry, but this, if these... I don't know if that means he's getting into a zone, because... I think that's Kagami's color too, red. What a fake. What is he gonna do? Agame! Oh. Snaps the ball straight in the air. What the heck? Is that... Okay, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Like a... I've seen a double pump fake, but not where the ball actually releases from the hand and then goes. Unless someone can tell me an example in the comments of when that actually happened. Oh. So is that... Maybe just a standard pump fake. that the coach was watching the early release and for him to be able to choose which release he wants mid shot is pretty impressive but I like that Himuro has a special move because he's not a very talented player. Maybe Aumine will give some tips to Kagami on how to stop it. The court looked unusually empty. Something feels off about the perspective here. Unless this gym is just really, really, really big. You can't even see the players on the court and the court looks a little too long. Oh, that's right. Totally forgot Kyoshi's out. 
and he wants to come back in. Oh no, he missed it. Until Kiyoshi comes in and saves the day. And he's just dunking on people. Oh jeez. Almost a 10 point lead just like that. If we can just enter the zone, then he could be unstoppable. This music's really good in this episode, those intense horns. Yeah, I wonder if people can consciously enter the zone or did it just come naturally without them knowing. Yes, it's an addiction. You always ask yourself, why can't I get into the zone? You just have to let it happen. This is such a true statement because once you've tasted being in the zone, you keep asking yourself, why can't I keep getting into the zone? Because you feel like, well, I did it last time. And it is true. You can't control when you're that locked in. However, you can influence the chances of you entering the zone through consistent training, taking care of your body, uh, mental preparation, meditation, like all these things to lay the groundwork. And even then it doesn't guarantee it, but it at least lays the groundwork for you to have a much higher chance of getting into that flow. And the worst way to not get in the zone is to fight it, meaning trying too hard to get into the zone. Because then as a player, when you try too hard, you tense up, and that's the whole point of the zone, is that you're, you're so relaxed and so effortless that it's flowing. And so higher effort, ironically, leads to lower chance of getting into the zone. Ooh, Kisei gets to... Oh, maybe Kisei's going to give him some advice. I knew a player was going to give him some advice. Sometimes playing with more fun and joy helps you get relaxed, which helps you get into the zone. I like how he's talking like this, like, ugh. You see kind of that elevated face, the nani look. <laughs> maybe he's trying to, okay, so maybe he's trying to get under a Kagami skin, say this is not the Kagami I know, the Kagami I know doesn't play this tense or this frustrated. And sometimes that's a way to get into the zone. At least for me, the way I get into the zone is when someone on the other side pisses me off when either they talk trash to me or maybe when my teammate knows the right words to get under my skin. So I wonder if he's trying to do this too. <laughs> Fight recklessly. Maybe there's some combo, combo power where fighting effortlessly but having entering the zone. What is the epiphany? Zone Deska. Learning my Japanese. <laughs> Face slap. He's 
is entering the Kyoshi zone. Now it's time for our halftime snack time from our video sponsors, Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Tokyo Treat is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box where you will get up to 20 of exclusive limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks, including Japanese instant ramen and drinks that are only available in Japan for a limited time. Sakurako is a monthly Japanese artisan snack box that supports local Japanese snack makers where each box comes with 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks, including Japanese teas and a special Japanese tableware. It's still cherry blossom season here in Japan. Did you know that the beauty of Sakura can be enjoyed not only during the day, but also at night? Known as Yozakura, experience the enchanting beauty of Japan Sakura under the moonlight with Tokyo Treat and Sakura Ko's special Yozakura box. This month's boxes feature a beautifully designed Yozakura themed box filled with a delightful assortment of Sakura inspired treats inviting you to immerse yourself in the Cherry Blossom Festival. You know, for Tokyo Treat tasting, we gotta go straight for the Kit Kats because every month is a different Kit Kat flavor. We don't get all these varieties in the USA, and I know these are only available in Japan. Man, that's, that's such a strong strawberry smell. Mm -mm -mm. Sometimes the Kit Kats are strawberry chocolate cake, strawberry cream, and this one's just a nice, simple strawberry flavor. Next, we'll try the Sakura Sweet Tart. Wow, that looks really interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a pastry look like this. Ooh, mm. Very soft crust with a very subtle hint of that cherry blossom flavor. One of the few English ones where I can actually understand Sakura waffle cookie. A lot of times the snacks are in Japanese, which is great because I get surprised because I can't read Japanese, so it's always interesting to know. But this one's a straight up waffle. Actually has a very eggy smell. Mmm, wow. Can't really taste the cherry flavor. It's like a very subtle hint at the end. You get a nice toasted waffle flavor from this. Now we got the Sakura Karinto, which I'm assuming means like toasted cracker. It smells like a donut. Fried donuts. Mmm. Super crunchy. It's got a nice glaze on the outside and almost like a hint of cinnamon. Now the Sakura cream cake. That just sounds delicious. Wow. Look how big that is and that beautiful stamp in the center. Mmm. Wow. They're serious when they said cream cake. Ooh. Bread on the outside. It's already great enough. And that subtle cream just takes it to another level that cherry flavored cream. Now it's time to try a more traditional selection of snacks from Sakura Co. Sakura cream cookie. I'm loving this cream theme here. Sometimes I try to open them very delicately because these pastries are pretty delicate and the designs are so beautiful that I don't want to break it. And I think that's the beauty of Japanese snacks is the visual enjoyment of it is just as great as the taste. Mm. Mmm, you guys heard how crunchy that was. The outside is almost like a fortune cookie, and then they got this cream on the inside for a soft but crunchy texture. Sakura Castella cake. Kinda looks like a pound cake, but it is really soft. Ah, smells so fresh. Just hits you with that, that fluffy air. I gotta smell it again, I love it. Feels more like a sponge cake with a cherry hint. Mm. This would go really great with some tea. My other favorite highlight of the Sakura Co boxes every single month is their yummy, freshly made mochis. And their mochis are so good. Look at how gooey that is. I can barely take it out of the wrapper. Look at that gooey deliciousness. Just that texture alone. First you get the great texture, then you get that deep rice flavor from the mochi, and then the cherry flavor hits you just at the end. Like it's a multi-level experience. Never had cherry flavored cashew nuts, and this has a little bit like a crust on the outside. Look at that, so interesting. Wow, 
Whoa, I thought it was just gonna be a sweet cashew, but you taste the, the sugar coating on the outside, which is not super sweet, and then you get hit with a nice deep cashew flavor, like a toasted cashew actually at the end. That's delicious. Sakura yokan, which is, I guess, like some type of jelly. Or maybe mochi too, because this is looks like liquid, but I don't think they would pack liquid like this. Otherwise, it would just come out. So probably some type of gummy. Oh, I'm so curious what's on the inside. Look at that. It smells sweet. Mmm. It's almost like a bean paste, but it's clear. Interesting texture. It's, it's not fully gelatin. It's a little pasty. And it's, it's clear so you can see the ingredients on the inside. And what better way to wash all these yummy snacks down with their Yozakura tea. And for this month, it's their blueberry hibiscus. It has a very, very strong hibiscus smell. Can't wait to taste this. I'm not a huge fan of berry flavored teas because I like that bitterness, but this one is good. And it just doesn't taste like a, a fruit tea where they put fruit syrup and then made it bitter, but you could taste the, the hibiscus and deep berry flavor in this. Mm. If you want to try your own Tokyo Treat and Sakurako snacks, then use my discount code and link below to get $5 off your first order. And you can enjoy your snacks while we watch Kuroko no Basket together. Also, every purchase that you make with my link gives me a small commission, which is a great way to support the channel because all that revenue goes directly back into making better videos for all of you. So thank you so much for your support. <laughs> oh, that's why she had to leave, leave the game to massage him. Oh, what a good player. Yeah, just having a, a coach there visually gives you strength. It does. It gives you that confidence knowing you have a leader on the court. Shadow and light, kind of like Kageyama and Hinata. Man, even Yosin looks a little tired now. Oh, the cat face gets to run the team. Let's see what that looks like there. So Kagami is in the center, three on, I don't know who that outside shooter is, it's probably Himuro. Okay. But that's where you gotta trust Kagami. Cover the entire paint. Roger that. Alright, the music's getting more triumphant, so Seder is gonna make a comeback. I mean, not trying to play like somebody else, but just playing to your strengths, what you know you can do. Just jump the jump as high as you can every play. Yeah, he's more relaxed, more fluid, more reactive. Oh, getting that rebound, dominating the paint. <laughs> Is he going to finally get a block on him? Ooh. Yeah, they were, he is a street baller. You see that smile? 
I think I saw, oh yeah, Kagami is smiling because he's playing with joy, he's playing with trust in himself, and he's playing more relaxed knowing what he can do. Oh, blocking, two hand block against Mirasaki Bata with the Colossus Scream. Two hand block, that's like a big poop on your face. <laughs> Oh, it's zone time! Yes! Ooh, we're getting the chills. I got goosebumps. And it's got the evil music. Oh, everyone sees it. Man, what does Kagami in the zone look like against Mirasaki Bata? He's in full Akuma mode. Raging Demon. Yeah, that's a really funny animation there. So everything's great until here and his arms just <laughs> like moving up and down. Dribbling is a full body movement. Wow, this animation is really good though. Dang, when did Humano get so good? Oh, but he can stop him in the zone. Maybe he stays high enough to block both releases in the same jump. Oh, and he still blocks his shot, just not even tipping it, just grabbing it. Damn, he just swat, not even just a tip, just swats it down. Oh, yeah, just give, no, oh, three, and his, his three points are flowing too in the zone. And he's looking away. Dude, look at that. This is that Steph Curry special. You just have such confidence in your flow. It just feels good. It feels right. You already know the result. Look at that. He's already looking away. That's some swag. Don't talk to him. Don't touch him. You know, that's exactly what we tell to our players. So in volleyball, when you're serving and you're just getting aces or putting the team what we call out of system which means disrupting their defense you're in the zone we call that in the zone as well because you're just locked in and not even trying to aim but just hitting as hard as you can in the right spot and just feeling where the ball is going to land versus trying to aim when someone's in the zone in volleyball we always tell our players and our teammates don't talk to that person because usually after each play of volleyball you come together you give each other high fives and some encouragement or you talk about the game plan the only person that's allowed to not get into the huddle is the server and that's up to them because once they serve and get an ace they need to go back to the service line and just focus on their serve and just let them be in the zone don't disrupt them don't try to get their attention but that's that's kind of funny it reminds me of that they're just no one's saying anything to uh kagami if he demands the ball just give it to him don't say anything let him do it <laughs> He's in a Midorima zone. And Himuro's shocked. And what would Mirosaki Bada look like in the zone? What's he gonna do? How is he gonna block this Cyclone? Thor's hammer! Damn, look at those eyes! Is there enough electricity coming out? It comes from timing. Okay, I think it's really <laughs> interesting that for this visual analogy, they happen to have two black basketball players demonstrating this analogy. <laughs> Instead of just, they should have just kept the, the silhouettes of Mirosaki Bara and Kagami here. Oh, he's putting his whole body into it. Oh, Ahumene is impressed. Oh man, he just rips it out. And look at that. You see how Mirosaki Bara kind of falls backwards. Boom, like stumbles back. Oh, does he fall down? Oh shoot, he was able to knock Mirosaki Bara back to the point where he almost falls on the ground. <laughs> Good trash talk. I used too much strength on you. That was sick. 
All right, thanks to her, now I remember Mirosaki Bada's nickname, so I don't have to keep saying that. And I remember a lot of you were very helpful telling me that his nickname is Mukun. So let's go, I wanna watch that scene again where he blocks him. Look at that, that eye is so menacing, the way it's curved like a banana. They should call this like Cyclone Dump. I don't know if Thor's hammer was appropriate. Uh, damn, whoops, <laughs> I got so excited I knocked the mic. <laughs> That's just such a cool scene. The electricity, the intensity of his eyes. Look at that, just coming straight out of the irises there. Jumping forward. Oh yeah, does he have that potential? Maybe it's too late. Maybe, maybe none of the players had that deeper gear to get into the mode by this point. What is the minimum requirement? Oh, yeah. That is true. To enter the zone, you can't just recreationally play. It has to consume you, it has to be your obsession, and it just has to en encompass every DNA in your body that this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm meant to play, and we'll just let it come out. Oh, interesting. I thought one of you said that all the Generation Miracles have the ability to get into the zone, but here he's saying Mukun doesn't. Oh, because he doesn't love the game enough. Himuro loves the game. Maybe just physically limited? Oh, that was cool. Look at this. So easy, so fluid, making him look like a fool. Oh, we gotta watch that passing sequence again. Man, catching the back of the hand. And look at that. Kagami doesn't even look at when he's receiving the ball. He's just in the zone. He just catches it like that. He's like, I know where it is. I'm just flowing. And just that red line just flowing with his eyes. Such a cool animation. A free throw dunk? No way. Oh, does he finally dunk on top of Mukun? He's just so determined. This is like Vince Carter's dunk. Oh, he's still flying. <laughs> oh, shoot. As Mukun is falling. Wow. The free throw dunk. Air walking like Michael Jordan. Oh, so cool. And he's looking down on Mukun. Damn, that was sick. Gotta watch it again. Oh, he, not only is electricity flowing from his eyes, but the aura is still kind of coming out of his arms, his whole body. Airwalk. This is a real life movement, by the way. Michael Jordan dunked near the free throw. And I think, I, well, technically, I think he stepped over the line, but I think there is someone that dunked behind the free throw line. But it looks cooler when Michael Jordan does it. And I think they specifically call it airwalking because that's uh, got to be a reference to Michael Jordan. They used to call him the airwalker. Uh, also, dunking over someone who's seven foot tall. Vince Carter did that in the Olympics. He just dunked over somebody. And I remember listening to an interview from Vince Carter. He didn't even know that he dunked on somebody his goal was just trying to dunk the ball and he saw someone in his way but he didn't know he posterized him and that's a great example of being in the zone when and he even he said himself that he didn't know that he could jump that high but he just felt in the moment and just seized the opportunity it just felt so right and the zone is real and vince carter we got to show that video of him dunking over that guy I love how his whole teammates just in the background. 
Oh, and the opponent. Does he get mad? What does Mukun say? Oh, do we get some backstory from Mukun? <laughs> oh, that, and then are they going to throw Kyoshi in too? Oh, uh, so the, when they have breaks like this, it's it's possible to get out of the zone when there's pauses. <laughs> oh, so funny. Now we know exactly why he can't get in the zone. Gave me the what? The sword? <laughs> He's accepted defeat. I kind of like Mukun a little bit more. Oh, punching him? Oh, shoot. Himeno just straight up knocks him out. Alright. This perspective, I know we're in an intense moment here, but it's hard for me not to not see these things as an art teacher and an animator. So if... Mukun is actually six or eight inches taller, like seven feet tall. Even when he's sitting down, he should be, his head should be a little bit higher than that, or his body should be thicker. But Mukun's arm is almost as thick as Himeno's arms, and his head should be a lot bigger if he's that much bigger. So here they almost look like the same size. But to maintain the, the character and feel of Mukun, they should have kept made him a lot bigger, even though he's sitting down in the scene. Oh. oh, that is like the worst thing you could say to Himuro. Unless Himuro gets so mad by that that he gets into this other godly mode from anger. All you need to do is say the right thing to piss the right competitor off and then they get into a different state. But the, he's like Kuroko with better abilities and a little bit less belief. Uh, whoever's doing his voice is doing such a good job of getting that drama. Oh, crying on his face. <laughs> oh, this is an example. This is an example of how a teammate, one person can bring the whole team down through selfishness. Because they could very much win. And Mukun despises people that care that much and try that hard. Damn. Because this is exactly what it should look like. You see how big Mukun is? He's almost the same height as Himuro standing, uh, standing up. That's better perspective. Oh, maybe Mukun has a different mode of just trying a little harder. Hair tie. Oh, the music is getting so intense and so good. Look at that. Look from Murasaki Bara. Many of you were saying in the comments how excited you guys were for 
watching episode 24. People were saying in the comments, I can't wait for the next episode, next episode. By the way, thank you so much for not spoiling in the comments because I had no idea that Kagami would have to enter the zone in this way. I knew he would be get back into the zone at some point because he's a good player, but to do it as a response to what Kisei was saying to him, and I just, I'm still not sure if Kisei was really trying to help him or whether he was expressing like true disappointment, like, oh, I thought you were a better player than this. Let me know in the comments if you think Kisei was doing this intentionally to help a friend or whether he was truly disappointed. And it makes sense as a competitor because Kisei playing against Yosen would have just been another good game from a good team. But to play against a special player like Kagami who knows how to get into the zone, that in itself is, is a whole different experience. Whether you win or lose, playing against such a great competitor is such a, a life-changing and an amazing experience. And I knew at some point Kagami was going to dunk on Mukun, but to do it in the way he did it from the three free throw line in the zone was just top-notch storytelling and great animation too and i love the fact that it's gonna go into another episode where we get to see more of this great zone basketball something that's ironic too is i remember Q season two well three and four but specifically season two and season four when it got to like the later episodes around 20 23, 24, especially in season four, that's when you just could not predict how crazy it was gonna get and it was just so good. So maybe because we're approaching the end of the season, but I can't wait to continue watching the end of this game. I hope Saturn wins, but the fact that Mukun is ready to try a little bit harder is pretty dangerous.